Hello today, people. We're playing Dead Space 3 on today's random game of the week, I guess. I should change it to, but <laughs> only today's weekly, but I call them random game of the day. But, uh, here we are. We're not too far into the story. This is where you're escaping, and you have to put this train together. It's in your kinesis. But, it takes me a few seconds to figure this one out. I try to scoot the thing on the way over. Is this train not yet complete? The turntable doesn't move back, so I'm like, what the fuck? It's not way off the turntable. I didn't figure that out for a few minutes after I go around and collect all the stuff. But, uh, this game is starting to take a little bit of flack because how it went actiony. I mean, Dead Space 1 and Dead Space 2 were, like, the pinnacle of, I guess you'd call modern survival horror. I mean, uh, since uh, Silent Hill hasn't been doing so good. Yeah, Silent, Silent Hill's been kind of sucking, so there was only really Dead Space left. I mean, there are other survival horror franchises like uh, Amnesia, but they're not too popular on console. I haven't played Amnesia yet, so don't don't ruin it for me. Uh, I know my girlfriend loves Amnesia, except she's a scaredy cat and can't play it <laughs> that long. Up oh, there we go. Now it's turning. Uh, but needless to say, this is a tutorial for kinesis. By the way, is to move this shit. <laughs> this game is also taking a little bit of flack because uh, it has microtransactions in it, which is odd, considering it's the last game in the trilogy. Stomp at that train. Uh, yeah, it's the last game in the trilogy, and uh, it has microtransactions. It has an online co-op. They put all this new stuff in. It just it feels like a natural progression of Dead Space, but it's the last one they're gonna make, basically, unless they do like a spin-off or something like that. But. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to hold my breath for that. Visceral's been working on Dead Spaces since Dead Space 1. They haven't done anything else since Dead Space 1. They still have uh, Dante's Inferno that they hinted at a sequel at, and they never did. Now, what else does Visceral have? Yeah, Visceral hasn't been around for all that long. I mean, they came out, they jumped out of the gate with Dead Space and Dante's Inferno, and it's both really good games. So, but the last few, last few years, all they've been working on is Dead Space, and you can see right here why this game feels more like uh, Resident Evil 5 than it does Dead Space 2. But, it, this doesn't maintain through the whole game. I'm actually a little bit farther in, and you start getting into the uh, survival horror parts. It kind of reminds me more of uh, Resident Evil 6 and Resident Evil 5, so... That's not a bad thing, Resident Evil 6 is infinitely better than Resident Evil 5 is, so... Oh no, more bad guys. You got this little rinky-dink submachine gun. Probably should have used the plasma cutter. It does have a interesting weapon crafting system. Push them off. <laughs> it always amused me when you stomp bodies or walk past bodies, how they just go flying in the air. Ah, oh, quick time events. What would we do without you? In my personal opinion, there's only been one game that did quick time events good. Well, actually, two games. 
really. It's been, uh, I guess, uh, with the God of War franchise and, uh, Heavy Rain, the people of Quantic Dreams doing it. Of course, of course their games are nothing but quick time events. I really don't think. I guess quick time events would have a nice place in, in video game games as long as it's done during cutscenes. But yeah, it'll actually make you pay attention to the cutscenes. If you don't pay attention, you die. But having a cutscene like on every other freaking fight that would be annoying. I mean, not cutscene, but a uh, quick time event. I mean, uh, the quick time events on like say Resident Evil 6 for example they took freaking superhuman reflexes to do on the first try in 99999999 percent of the time when you're when you're uh, watching a Resident Evil 6 cutscene for the first time you're not paying attention to the, <laughs> to, the, to the bottom of the screen you're like oh you gotta press this button and you die then you gotta do it over again like okay then there's usually multiple button presses you have to do. The one that comes to mind the most was uh, the knife fight with Krauser on Resident Evil 4. That was brutal the first time you played it. Yeah, usually you go in, immediately get killed on the first button press because you had like literally like a second to press it or you're dead. So, okay, you know it's coming this time. Bam! You get killed on the second button press. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, do that all the way throughout. Fortunately, Resident Evil didn't change the... Uh, <laughs> Resident Evil 4 didn't change the button presses that you needed to press. Or the, uh, the HD remake didn't change the button presses you needed to press. Resident Evil 4 on the GameCube, however, it would change the buttons you needed to press. So if you had your finger already on the A, and all of a sudden they wanted you to press the B, yeah, it wasn't fun. That's a, but uh, the I've only had one quick time event so far in Dead Space 3. I know there's a glitch in the game on the PC. For uh, fuck, I heard people complaining about it. It's this, something to do with spiders. There's a spider boss fights that requires you to do quick time events to kill them and if you don't put the game on low graphics settings you cannot see the quick time events or something like that the button prompts which is retarded but uh, that's kind of my only complaint with this game so far anyway like I said I'm not too far into it but on the PC on 1080p <laughs> the, the graphics are fucking gorgeous compared to the consoles like I've been on graphics overload lately with uh, Far Cry 3 and now Dead Space 3. And now we got Crisis 3 coming out. <laughs> so yeah, it's pretty interesting. But the, so far, my experience with the weapon crafting system is very, very minimal. Because, I, like I said, I'm not too far into the game, so there's really only a few things you can make. But you can craft complete freaking weapons. Uh, unlike in Dead Space 2 and 1, where you had to get the schematic and the, and the uh, thing would make the gun for you. But that was all you could make. <sighs> you, can ha you can have attachments, too, in it. So, this right here is pretty cool looking. The glass cracking underneath as you walk across it. Pretty tension tensiony tension build. I'm like I'm not gonna have to use fucking stasis on that damn door am I? Now, there's another part coming up where it's not ex exactly too clear <laughs> what you're supposed to do. They're like you need to un you need to undo the clamps undo the clamps on the thing so we can jettison the pod, the skate pod. So he's in space. 
Alright, that's your first suit you get. I guess it's the only suit you get, I don't know. I know you could buy other suits at the store and buy other weapons and shit like that. The microtransaction part. But you can upgrade your suit too, the same way you upgrade your weapons. This is really cool how the whole whole thing's turning around you. I'm not turning, the whole freaking building's turning. That's really cool. But yeah, you gotta use your kinesis on those blue things. Slide them out. Now, after you do this, I had no idea what I was supposed to fucking do. I'm like, okay, they're off. Now what? Thing is, I didn't know I was supposed to go up there and... I'm trying to fly around the other side to see if there's more clamps, trying to do everything here, and there's a fucking console thing you have to go up to and activate, like right there. I'm trying to kinesis it because it's, it's blue, so I'm trying to kinesis it, and nope, nope, not working. So, building's still spinning around. So now I gotta go oh, try to go over here. Nope, can't go do that. I okay. I'm like that won't go any farther. I'm like what the fuck? I said I spent a good minute trying to figure this out, and I'm running out of oxygen. So not exactly a good time to be spending trying to figure something out. Uh, it says go up to the same. Thank God for the B button. Uh, okay, here's where we're greeted to the something that came up in Dead Space 2. Where you have to zip through space using your boosters and the void shit coming at you. fucking landmark mines you have to follow that damn box this is a decently cool sequence I'm sure there's probably gonna be like another one that's gonna be even harder I also know that to be able to play the entire full game there's like three hours of content that you can only play in co-op which kind of sucks, honestly, because I don't have anybody else. I don't have any friends on the PC who have this fucking game. So, if I want to do it, I'm about to do it with a complete fucking stranger. Which I really don't want to do. So, you know, I know there's three hours of content you don't get if you don't play co-op. But, fuck it. I, I, I don't care what the three hours is because I'm not going to uh, do it. Because I don't want to play with fucking random fucking hill jack it's gonna fucking be a complete fucking moron and troll the entire game I just have absolutely no faith in uh, gamers up today needless to say at least they filled my uh, health my uh, oxygen tank back up that was nice of them I was almost out of air I only had like a hundred seconds left But, uh, I think that will just about do it for this video. Uh, it's definitely, I'd, I'd definitely give this game so far, so far since playing it. Press Alt. I would give this game, uh, an 8 out of 10. That's my rating system. I'll do, give it a 3 out of 5. I'm not Adam Sessler, but, uh, Anyways, thanks for watching.